Good evening ladies and gentlemen, ZA Linux Dev here again with another tutorial for you guys and tonight I thought we would cover installing the .NET Core SDK and uh, Visual Studio Code in the Linux environment so that we can start developing some .NET Core goodness apps. Um, so firstly what is .NET Core? So if you have a look at Wikipedia it says that .NET Core is a free and open source managed software framework for Windows, Mac OS and Linux. It consists of Core CLR, a complete runtime implementation of CLR, the virtual machine that manages the execution of .NET programs. Core CLR comes with an improved JIT compiler called RioJIT. So basically what this means is that Microsoft has gone and created a cross-platform version of their CLR or Common Language Runtime Engine, which is the engine that drives .NET development. Um, it is not a complete implementation of this engine as yet. Um, there are still a few uh, things that are missing in this engine. Um, you can't do everything that you can do in .NET on .NET Core, uh, which is why it's called Core. Um, but it's it's pretty powerful already, as you'll be able to see in a minute. Um, what is the benefit of running .NET Core? I mean, obviously it runs on Windows, it runs on Mac, and it runs on Linux. And you can write one set of applications, or you can write one application and have it cover all of these different platforms, um, depending on how you compile it. Uh, let's have a look at installing the .NET Core SDK. So what you're going to do is you're going to open up a terminal, and you are going to use your um, package manager that you have in your local distro. Since I'm running i3 Manjaro, it's Pac-Man. I think Ubuntu and Debian-based distros, it will be uh, APT. So you'll go APT install. Um, Red Hat and Fedora, the base distros, you'll go yum install. And the package is .NET dash SDK dash 2.1. Just type in my password over here, and you'll see that I've already installed the package, so I'm not going to do it again. Um, once you've got that installed, uh, you can go ahead and grab the Visual Studio Code editor. And how do you do that? Well, there's many ways to skin a cat. Um, you can go to code.visualstudio.com and download the Debian package if you're in a Debian-based distro, or an RPM-based package if you're based off of Red Hat or Fedora. Um, if you are like myself on uh, Manjaro or an Arch based distro, you can use the terminal. Let me just uh, get into the terminal. You can use Yart and you could do a Yart of Visual Studio Code and this will search the Arch user repositories for Visual Studio Code. And you'll see that it is the first one on the list. So you can go ahead and do a number one there to choose a code. And it'll start downloading the package build from the Arch user repository. Do you want to edit the package build? I'm going to say no. And it's going to say that it wants to install the missing dependencies. Uh, Let's remove Node.js, let's restart, let's say no, let's say we want to continue, do we want to install this, yes. Let's not remove that dependency, okay. Well it seems I'm having a little bit of a problem with my yard, I'll figure that out offline. Um, however, I've already done the install for Visual Studio Code, so we should be good to go. Um, let's go ahead and run code. So this is what Visual Studio Code looks like when you uh, first start it. Um, to create a new .NET application, um, you can go ahead and open up a terminal. Uh, trying to log me into my user. Let's do that. Okay, so to create a new .NET application, let's say we want to create a basic hello world. I'm going to create a folder in my home directory, home folder, call it hello world, cd into that. Okay, so the command that you run to create a new .NET application, a new .NET console application is .NET 
new console dash o and you give your project a name let's call it hello world and this should create the dotnet application for us that's cool because it's what's happening pretty cool okay so we've got the dotnet hello world application running uh, by the way if you want to make sure what which version of the dotnet core clr you are running just do a dotnet whack dash dash version and it'll show 2.1.300 so that's useful for if you want to uh, search the internet for some help when you're doing debugging. Anyway, so let's go back to Visual Studio Code here. Uh, let's say that we want to open a folder and I'm going to open up that folder that I've just created, which is this hello world. And within that, that's my project folder and I'll open it. Cool. So you'll notice it opens up the project and there is our program. So if we want to build it, we can do a F5 and we could use .NET Core. And it says it requires assets to build and debug are missing from Hello World, add them. I'll just say yes, do that. And basically what this does is it creates some scaffold JSON uh, for Visual Studio Code to enable it to uh, build your project. So you'll notice that it says that it's going to build your project in a debug mode into slash bin slash debug netcore app 211 hello world or dll. So that's the one difference between um, compiling a .NET Core application on Linux versus compiling it on Windows is that it doesn't create an exe, it creates a dll. And I'll show you how that works in a bit. Um, then over here we've got our tasks which just specifies this is how we build this project. We're going to build CSProj. Um, let's have a look at what else is in here. I think the rest we can ignore for now. Cool, so that should be it. So if we want to start debugging the application, we can start debugging and have a look at the terminal over here on the bottom. It says it's building. Zero errors and it's running and it's debugging and you'll see that it output hello world there in the debug console so this is pretty useful because i mean we can start coding console applications obviously i'm not going to get into too much detail into or regarding how to do that because um, uh, that is another uh, topic in itself and i think there are um, many tutorials on the internet regarding c -sharp. Uh, let's just do a quick one let's say console the right line um, so what i'm doing is i'm grabbing an input and i'm printing it out and then i'm going to do a console dot read key which means that the application will stop and wait for me to press a key so you'll notice that it built successfully waiting for it okay the debug console says hello world and it's waiting for my input let's say I am awake and it's gonna print I am awake and it's waiting for me to press any other key and I'll press that key and the application should, should terminate okay I don't know why it didn't terminate there um, so like I said, there are some caveats with uh, .NET Core. Um, I think I might have run into one there. Uh, however, if we have a look at our um, our folder, what's up? Uh, let's go to terminal and we'll browse to the folder. So let's say CD. Um, hello world, hello world, bin debug, netcore app. Um, let's list the contents there. You'll notice that we have 
uh, hello world .json. this lists all the dependencies that uh, hello world is going to be well obviously dependent on we've got our pdb which is our debug information uh, we've got a runtime configuration um, and we've got a runtime configuration for development so you can have two different sets of runtime configs based on whether you're debugging or whether you're releasing and this hello world dll this is where all our code is running so i'm not going to show you guys uh, how the how that works right now that's a topic for next week so but what i will show you is to run the dotnet app in the terminal you just do a dotnet hello world dll and i'll say hello world and i can say hi there and it'll write back my output and it'll wait for a key press so that's basically what we've just coded which is pretty cool right well that is it for now for this week i hope you guys found the tutorial uh, valuable uh, we will run into a little bit more advanced stuff next week i'll show you how to build the core clr from source and i'll show you the all well some of the tools that we get to work with if we do that uh, for instance um, ildasm which is the il disassembler so IL is the intermediate language that .NET uh, compiles to, which the CLR then grabs and creates executable code off of. And then I'll also show you ILASM, which takes the IL that we can generate from the application and turns it back into an executable. I will also show you how to compile this code and have it run on a Windows environment. So looking forward to that one. Anyway, I hope you guys have a good evening and like I said, I hope this video was worth it to somebody out there. Um, if you like this video, please remember to hit like, share and subscribe and click on the notification icon for notifications on more awesome videos like this. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a good one. Thank you. As ever, this is uh, ZA Linux Dev signing out.